he's still standing. The atmosphere in this place is insane. The crowd, the energy. I've never experienced anything like it. In Dublin, December 8th, and make more European mixed martial arts history. Welcome. Welcome to the PFL Europe 2023 Championships. Um, it's been a wild year. It's been incredible. We didn't really know exactly how this year was going to turn out when we set out. We certainly didn't expect the success that we've had this year. Um, PFL had grown very, very quickly, as you know. Um, obviously, with the Bellator acquisition, that's just increased our roster considerably and given the Professional Fighters League a lot of other opportunities to make some really interesting matchups. It's been an incredible year. We've, we've covered a lot of ground. We've had some incredible shows. Obviously, starting off in Newcastle, um, that was a, a standout event. Went on to Berlin, which was incredible as well. Paris, the playoffs just absolutely blew us out of the water. Of course, having Cedric Dumbay at the top of that was um, you know, a very special moment. And all of the fights on the card came, showed up, delivered, qualified for the playoffs, and uh, qualified for the championships, of course, and that's where we are right now. Um, I just need to give a shout out to DAZN as well. Uh, we've partnered with DAZN, and this is really what's given us the opportunity to bring these, these, these chances, this platform to these fighters. Um, the partnership with DAZN has been incredible, and it gives all of these fighters on these cards the opportunity to you know, reach an audience that they potentially wouldn't be able to reach anywhere else. Um, so first of all, a big, big thank you to DAZN. Um, what else have I got to mention? So yeah, so about two weeks ago, uh, we gave out six world titles in Washington, D.C., six million dollars. Um, and this, for me, speaking from a fighter's perspective, is really the benefit of being a PFL fighter. You know what you're doing, you know your route to success, you know the money on the table at the end of it, and you know, you know you're gonna be active. If you keep winning fights, you're gonna, you're gonna keep getting in, into the smart cage and keep winning money, and you're gonna make your way to a world title. Everyone knows what they're up against. Everyone knows the path to the world title. And now, of course, with PFL Europe and with the other leagues that will be opening up around the world, we're creating pathways for people around the world to be able to get to that global championship and get their hands on that million dollars, of course, if they're successful in their fights. We're going to get the fighters out here. Um, so we're going to do this. The way this is going to run, we're going to do this in two groups. We're going to do undercard. The music. We're going to do undercard and feature bouts first, and then we're going to do the championships and the main event. So. Let me bring to the stage, welcoming the first group. We have Daniel Scatizzi, David Tona Kroll, Clayton Silver, Tom Breeze, Brett Johns, Andreas Binder, Wesley Meyer, Dylan Took, Yazid Shushane, and Louis McGrillan. Got some superstars on this table. Give a round of applause, guys. So just before we open up to uh, questions, I just want to kind of highlight some of the matchups that we've got on this card. Um, I've been really, really privileged to be signing and matching these fighters. We've got some incredible bouts on this card. Um, all of the guys up on, this, up on this stage today, they're fighting for places in the European Championship, or we have Silver and Breeze at the back, they're fighting for a place on the Global Championships. So they'll be going into the uh, the, the global tournament with the running for a million dollars and the world title. So lots on the line this weekend as well as the championship fights. Um, of course, Dylan Toop, superstar in the region, really impressed me throughout this season. Taking on Yazid Shushane, who will be joining us next year as well. Had a fantastic performance in Paris. This is going to be a really exciting fight. That is one of the feature bouts on the card high up to divide up the championship fights. Um, Brett Johns, David Toner, Kroll, I mean, you guys know these two, the absolute superstars. It's going to be a really, really interesting battle. Uh, Brett Johns is moving up to featherweight to take on David Toner, Kroll. Very, very exciting fighters, both with a lot of potential and a lot of room to grow in their career as well. So expect to see them regularly on PFL events. And then, of course, uh, <laughs> Lewis McGrillan and Wesley Meyer, this fight will need no introduction. Um, you, you'll see in the face of them, these guys cannot wait to get their hands on one another. And when this fight came together, I did a little dance in my kitchen because I know this one is going to be an absolute banger. Um, expect a lot of fireworks from this card, and the guys on, on this stage are some of the best fighters in the world. Take my word for it. Okay, uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We've got someone that's going to bring a microphone around to you, and we will take any questions that you have. Who you got? Yep, we've got a microphone over here. James Stairs is on his way over. I 
had the mark, sorry, my bad. Don't think they're real, stop being glad, so people will hear this, so oh. I think it's on. Go for it. Uh, just a question for Lewis and Wesley. I uh, just wanted to talk about like your um, your original confrontation. Um, what happened there? What, what did you guys see in each other uh, when, when, you, when you finally came face to face? You go first. Testing, testing. Yeah. Uh, when I see him, just thought, little frail Brazilian as usual. That's all I just thought, thought typical guy with a jizz head, dyeing his hair blonde. Do you know what I mean? That's all I just thought, straight away. Yeah. Same script. Now, to be honest, that, that was me oh. chasing this fight. Like, I've been chasing this fight for nearly two years now. And his coach turned down the fight, declined the fight like twice before. But I'm happy, that's all God's plan, because now we're in the big stage. And you guys are going to be able to enjoy what I'm going to do to this ginger boy over there. Ginger boy, typical. Come head. Come head. Do you know what I mean? Ginger jokes. What? I think I've had that since I was about five or something. You, you, Every person said that. You know that. the funny thing? This guy, we was backstage. What's that? He called me sausage. Look at me and him. Who looks like a sausage? A what? A what? He called me sausage. Look to me. Look to him. Who looks like a sausage? Come on, guys. Let, let me jump in here and ask a question. What's it like to train for someone that you really want to fight? Well, he didn't same. want to fight. They want, I'm here. I'm here right now. You didn't want it when you was in the lobby early on yesterday. I seen you in front of your family. I'll fight you in front of your family. No, no problem. Out on the street, I'll fight you. I'm not bothered, mate. I've got nothing to hide from you. In the street, I would go jail. You were shook. On the street, you were shook. When I was shook, you were looking in me street, in the eyes. I would go jail. I'm trying to look away. I'm trying to look away. They were the in your jaw. I would go jail. Stink, mate. Shut up. Is this still the fourth question? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I think so. Did you answer it? Because yeah. we've had the music on. We haven't really been listening. I've answered it. <laughs> Next question. Uh, quick question for Wesley. Quick question from me for, for Wesley Meyer. Um, so you took this fight a few weeks ago. You've had a good, good amount of preparation for this. What have been your thoughts of uh, McGrillan's performances in the PFL so far? Two clean knockouts. Um, putting on the side his personality and how, like, how much, like, let's say I don't, they don't like him, he doesn't like me. Uh, I respect his skills, and that's where I'm. Bam, that's where I'm fucked on, on, on here. You know, he can do all the jokes. He, he, he thinks it's cool, but when we get locked in there, we're gonna have the. He's not gonna have the TikTok fans fight for him. Yeah, we'll see. So, uh, but I respect. I know he got good boxing skills, good left hand. He got everyone likes to say he got the knockout power, but I got I got knockout power too. I can. Who have you not told? Anything. I can do anything. Wait, wait, wait. Who have you not told? Anytime, you know. He's not knockout power. Who have you not told? Hang on. I'm wants. asking you a question, sir. So, uh, you I had a good preparation. I was knock a wank well. out. Um, you could knock a wank out. I was already in camp, so uh, it's good. No, nothing really changed. I've been seeing this fight on, on my mind, like. Many times, even this, you know, like the way we shout like a, I don't want to say like a bitch, but You're the a way bitch. we shout now, you know. So um, I've, I'm expecting this. Yesterday, he, he disappointed me a little bit. I was expecting a little bit more, but it's cool. I had a great preparation. I had a quick question from me for, for Dylan. Are you you're with us? Yeah, you're, you're I with felt like you were in between me and my So you, you opened the season with us. Uh, you were successful in the first in the, the opening season, but then you were unsuccessful in the playoffs. Just talk to me about your year, how you've changed, because you've been a very impressive development fighter, uh, for, for, in my opinion. You've developed very quickly. Talk to me about the process of being in the PFL and what you're looking for in the future. Yeah, I'm class. Um, Especially when I need James Dillon. Uh, I'm looking forward to going back into the bracket next year to fix the course so I am a proper lightweight now, whereas a fellow ain't cutting down, I was just walking around like a little skinny bitch. So now at least I'm a little bit stockier. So I look forward to going and taking that European title next year and then on to the state of the year after. And then I can retire and live on Reese's for the rest of my life. So <laughs> <laughs> Another question? Anybody? Yeah, fire away. Uh, you fell short. In the last fight. We battered him. We battered him. Or we battered him. But eight minutes we battered him and then we hit a wall. So we felt a little bit short, but we still battered him. <laughs> so how, how does it feel to still be able to have this Beta. form in front of Beta. We yeah. should be there claiming a world title and getting a hundred grand in front of me hometown in D one. He's like, Oh welcome to my city by the way. Um but you know it hasn't happened and it will happen next year, I'm just gonna truck on and fuck it, it is what it is, isn't it? Power and the energy that the crowd gives you to sort of, you know, push you next 
next season as well, to know that you could get that, you know, get that title maybe in Dublin again next season? Oh, yeah, I get you. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't really pay attention to any of that shit. That's kind of like a monkey with a circus, you know what I mean? So I just kind of, I'm just saying they tell me thing. But uh, well, the crowd is always amazing in Ireland. The Irish fans love uh, violence. So um, I look forward to showing off in front of them. And I look forward to them seeing PFL for the first time. So uh, I think they're in for a treat. Just an expansion on that from me. What are your thoughts on your opponent, Yazid Shishen? Yeah, he's a tough guy. He's a, a tough French guy. So, um, Good record, 10-3, 24, little stocky guy. Uh, he's a tough, yeah, he's a tough opponent. So I'm, I'm, I'm well capable of what, uh, what he's going to bring to the table, and I'm sure we're going to bring a great fight to the fans. Another question. Anybody? Yes. Well, what's it like being back in Dublin, back in front of the Dublin crowd? Uh, yeah, it's beautiful to be back up in Dublin. Um, we, you know, we've sold out. We've got the biggest reception in the tree arena, I think. Any time I fought there, when obviously a local lad, and flats are around the corner, so you know parking in Garden Street flats afterwards, boys, there's a lot of boys. Um, joints are on me. Um, so pretty much it. Like I'm, I don't know. Like I, I try not to think about. It. I'm Scottish now. You know what I mean? I'm I'm Scottish. I'm like Paul McVay, so I should really be sitting up here with me the Scottish flag, just you know cheering away. But yeah, look, I, I put a Scottish accent on people. It's terrible. So I'm not gonna try. <laughs> And a question from me for uh, Brett Johns. You've been out of the, uh, the cage for a while now. Tell me about this training camp this year. What's this year been like for you and what's it going to be like to get back in there competing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, firstly, I'm very grateful. Very grateful to the guys for, for having me on. Very grateful to Dan having me on. You know, I, I was at a crossroads at the beginning of this year. Um, a lot of personal issues with, with family and with my wife. And um, the one thing I will say, though, is no matter if I'm going through these difficult times, one thing I'm very good at doing is focusing and, and, and getting my head in the gym. Um, you know, it, you know, I've been training non-stop. Yeah, people say he's had a year off. A year off maybe competing, but not a year off training. You know, I've, I'm constantly in the gym working with the best team in the world, in my opinion, and um, I'm just very grateful to be there. And look, yeah, training camp's been absolutely fantastic. It's fair though, we got a tough fight, you know. Um, and to be completely honest, we're going into his territory, fair the weight. Um, I'm feeling great though, I've got to be honest, Dan, you know, the, the week has been, it's, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think doing this cut the featherweight has opened my eyes, you know, we're going to get, we're going to find out after, after Friday night whether it's going to be a pair of the featherweight or staying in a bantam weight. But um, I truly believe I'm one of the best in the world at what I do. You know, you know, I fought in the major promotions in the world, fought the best fighters in the world. You don't have to believe me, you can go and have a look at it, you can go online and see these things, you know what I mean? And um, to be a part of the PFL roster is a big deal, you know, to do the, what I call the triple crown. Nobody in my country has ever done it. You know, I'm, gonna be, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna sit here and say, look, I want global, I want PFL global, I want one million dollars, and who the hell doesn't want that? So that's my aim, that's my aim, and I'm doing it for Wales and doing it for my team. And one of the fight I want to draw your attention to. We've got uh, Daniel Scatizzi on one end of the press conference table and Andreas Binder on the other. Now, of course, both of these guys are from outside of Ireland. They've both moved here to train, um, both members of the SPG community, but different gyms. Um, the other interesting storyline here, of course, is that Daniel Scatizzi's sister will be fighting uh, Dakota Dichiva in one of the championship bouts as well which will be really cool to have a brother and sister on the card. But before we move on, I just kind of want to open it up to um, uh, Daniel Scatizzi and just kind of give us uh, an idea of uh, what well, your move to Ireland, your training here, and then what your thoughts are on your sister competing on the same card. Uh, first of all, it's uh, really funny because uh, if someone uh, told me two years ago, you're gonna be in the undercard and uh, your sister gonna fight for a belt, I'm gonna say, ah, no, this is impossible. <laughs> Uh, but this is the life, it's really funny. And um, to be honest, uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to, to see my sister fight uh, against uh, a good opponent like Dagota. I think uh, this is, can be like a, uh, a rocky, rocky movie. This is funny because Valentina can be like uh, the little dog from, my, uh, from Italy, the little good dog against uh, Ivan Drago, Dagota, big, blonde, uh, looking good. And uh, can be a good movie. It can be a good movie. Rocky, but woman. And, and how well do you know Andreas Binder? Uh, 
Uh, to be honest, when I when I when I lived here, uh, I never met uh, Andreas. I think he was training maybe in another in another gym. I, I don't know. I don't know really. And uh, I think it's a really good fighter. I, I see him when he when, when you give me the name of my opponent. Uh, uh, he put uh, he put a lot of heart in, in his fight. So um, I, I really think this is gonna can be the match of the night. I'm sure of this. There's a lot of people talking about this one. Andreas, what are your thoughts on your opponent? Um, yeah, as soon as as soon as I got his name on, um, I knew it would be a standout fight. Like, tell me, in in recent years, when have you seen an SPG against an SPG club going head to head? And especially now, Roddy against Kavanagh, you know, it'll be battle of the bragging rights. So no, it's it's a great fight for the fans. It's a great fi uh, fight for both of us. He's experienced, uh, but um, no, we're, we're going in there, give it 110% and make a statement. Nice. And then, of course, the, the light heavyweight fight. I'm very, very much looking forward to this. Uh, Clayton Silver, former Brave champion. Tom Breeze, of course, uh, former UFC veteran. Um, both of these guys up at light heavyweight. Both of them looking to qualify for the global roster next year. Um, Two highly skilled competitors, two very, very experienced guys. Um, I just want to turn to Tom Breeze first and just kind of give him a moment just to talk us through this training camp, how he's feeling and what it's going to be like to try and qualify for the million dollar tournament. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here, you know, I'm uh, excited for the fight, so the training's good, you know, and uh, just keep going, just keep going, keep going my career, I've been doing it a long time and as I say, happy to be here. And on the other side, uh, Clayton Silver. Tell us what it's like to be joining the PFL and what your plans are for 2024. Estou feliz por poder estar aqui. No speak English, my sorry. Estou feliz por estar aqui. É um momento incrível na minha carreira, aonde eu posso ver o trabalhar de Deus na minha vida, onde Deus tem me honrado e me trouxe até aqui. E eu creio que se Deus me trouxe aqui, Ele abriu essas portas para mim estar aqui, eu vou honrar o nome dEle e vou fazer o meu melhor. Pode ter certeza que eu vim para mim ser o campeão da PFL. Eu estou muito feliz de estar aqui. É um momento incrível para a minha carreira. Eu vou fazer o que eu vou fazer com Deus e eu vou fazer isso em Deus. E eu não vou para qualquer lugar nessa jornada sem Deus. E eu vou ganhar a campeonato na PFL. Sabe o que eles dizem? Vai, põe lá. Jesus loves knockouts. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Jesus loves knockouts. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get me tea back one day, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking about you. Like, Franz Van Ambo is the biggest Christian ever. And he looked me dead in the eye, man. I'm going to pray they have tea grow back. <laughs> but that's a true story. That's a true. This is like uh, Nogueira with the boost and the horse. This happened. And I just looked at him and ran around the gym up and asked him this. <laughs> I'll put your teeth on my praise as well. <laughs> I'm fucked. <laughs> a any more questions from anybody? <coughs> well, yes? Question for Andreas. Why not? 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 Yeah, so all my fights I've taken, I went the, the long road. I took the hardest fights there were out there. I, I never said no to anyone. And it's been a long, long five or six years now that I fought in Ireland. I remember my last fight in, in Ireland was on Clamors um, against Janice and Castro, and that was like fight of the night. So it's nice to be back home, closer to home now, obviously, because I moved up. I moved up closer to Dublin, so I'm bringing a very big crowd. But um, I'm just looking at one fight at a time. Do you know, like, Danielle is across from me. Um, I'm looking at that fight first, and then we'll go from there. Do you know, I don't want to look too far ahead again. Be, and yeah, I'll be more than ready. And I'm really honored to fight again in Dublin, and I'll 
I've been literally looking to fight in the three arenas since I was a little kid, so I'm excited and you're in for a treat. Yeah, this is a special arena. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been to events there before. I've certainly been to a few myself. The atmosphere in there is, is incredible, and I, I expect on Friday night, for every one of these fighters when they walk out, the performance that they're gonna give, the, uh, the fans are in for a real treat. Um, if we've not got any more questions, we'll cycle these fighters out and bring in the next group. Okay. Oh, one more. Tom? Yeah. Sure. Uh, you fought in the NFL and became the champion there, and uh, two-way class as well, but it's been between, yes, sorry, uh, after the UFC. Uh, what's the biggest change that that's made for you, uh, that made you ready for BFL? Uh, sorry, I just don't know what you're from fighting on levels, what's the major oh. Yeah, well, I fought uh, on levels and KSW, I've had like six fights in 18 months. Um, in the UFC? Sorry? In the yeah, I fought in the UFC, so yeah, I've got plenty of experience, you know, this is my 22nd professional fight. Um, so yeah, I feel, I feel well prepared, feel good. So I mean, like, that, that step? Uh, after the UFC as well, what, what, what's the biggest difference that's made for you? From, from the UFC to here, yeah, what's the biggest change? Uh, for, from, for me? Yeah, I'm a more experienced fighter, you know, I've been working hard on my craft, you know, we, we've got a strong stable at the gym at Team Renegade, so I've been working with my teammates and, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm the best version of myself heading into my prime years, active, so yeah, best is to come. Okay, good round to in Gary, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? All good. Okay. Thank you very much, these guys. Give them a round of applause. They leave the stage. They got the and make more European mixed martial arts history. This next group of fighters will be the four championship bouts as well as the main event. Um, we have four five round fights on this card, of course. The light heavyweight, lightweight, uh, bantamweight and women's flyweight titles are on the line. And then we have a showcase bout with Nathan Kelly against Demetrius Solomus. Um, Lots of really, really talented and experienced fighters on this stage. A lot of money on the line. And of course, as you can see, we have the PFL Europe Championship belts as well, which, uh, I'll be honest, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on one myself, but uh, these guys have kicked my ass on this stage, so we won't be doing that. All right, let's welcome the next group to the stage. Please give them a round of applause. Valentina Scatizzi, Jakub Nedo, Dimitri Solomus, Nathan Kelly, Simeon Powell, Dakota Dichuba, Kershia Kakarov, Jakub Kasuba, John Mitchell, and Franz Malamba. Okay, before we open up to questions, I just want to thank all of these fighters for the, the, the work that they've done this year, the work they've put in, the performances that they've given. Um, they're all here based on merit, based on performance, based on victory. And that's really what the PFL is about. It is a meritocracy, right? If you join the regular season, you have just as much chance as anybody else of getting that championship and that $100,000. And of course, the potential is you win the European Championship, if the PFL feel you're prepared and you're ready, they will progress you to the global championship where you'll be able to get within striking distance of a million dollars. Um, which I'm sure, if you ask everybody on this stage, that million dollars in their pocket is something they're thinking about right now. But for the time being, we've got 100,000 on the line, which is a good chunk of cash and some beautiful belts as well. Um, so I'll open up to questions. If you've got a question, please raise your hand. And I will, okay, first one. Dylan, you want to take coffee? <laughs> Ah, you want your, is it yours? Your coffee? Ah, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> that one's for you. He stole the hat though. Can I believe it, bro? The sponsor is the Yoki fucking Asian. 
Okay, anybody want to kick us off? First question? Go for it. So, uh, you uh, unfortunately used to train or spar together back in the day as well. Uh, do you know, uh, what are some changes that you've noticed now in him? I just noticed his striking has gotten way crisper. Um, but, you know, he's always had a, a real good all around game. And, yeah, he's just gotten a bit nicer on the feet. But, you know, we work to improve. That's what it makes sense that he has. So, uh, yeah, it's just as expected. I think with, when you signed with PFL Europe, uh, w would you have expected to be here at this point and in a packed uh, three arena in the final? 100%. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have came here otherwise. Um, and obviously, as it is, I'm expecting to be way past this. Like, I'm expecting to, to um, I I'm chasing that hundred, I mean, I'm chasing that million, and I'm obviously expecting to get there when that opportunity comes. Okay, push it. Uh, also, uh, same question because you used to spar together. Uh, what is the biggest difference that you've noticed now in uh, in uh, France than before? Um, I don't know really, so nothing special. But here, yeah, Francis is a great fighter. He was uh, before strong and now is strong too. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, for me, it's important what I can, how strong I am. So I am strong, I am a high level fighter, I am champion level fighter. So this is, uh, I am confident, but I respect him, I respect his, his skills, he is strong. So this is what I can say. And you respect the fans to be behind the Irish fighter as well. Uh, do you think that's going to energize you more or how are you going to deal with that mentally? Yeah, this 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 give, give me energy, but for him it's maybe hard <laughs> uh, because he he has to do some good uh, stuff for he, his fans. But for me it doesn't matter if I am inside a cage. I have one uh, things to to do. I have to finish my opponent. I give everything to finish a fight, but uh, we don't know what happens. But I know what I want. This is important for me. That's it. Just a, a, a quick question for Franz. What, what are your feelings on 25 minutes instead of 15? I'm ready for 25 minutes. Um, I actually usually train for 25 minutes instead of 15, so just as well, yeah. I'm good to go. Um, and Kershen, does that change your game at all? 25 minutes instead of 15? This is uh, good for me. I, I like to uh, fight along because I, I, I don't get tired. First round is always for me dangerous, but uh, as long as fight goes, uh, it's better for me. So I have good cardio, I can fight five rounds, I can fight ten rounds. So this is good for me. And same question to the lightweight championship. John, you go first. Talk to me about this fight between you and Jakob Kasuba. Do you feel like the extra 10 minutes changes this fight, changes the game plan at all? Yeah, it suits me down to the ground. If you look at any of my fights, a gas tank is probably one of my best attributes. I think Jakob's a great opponent, but I think I'm, and he probably thinks the same, I think I'm a lot better. When the longer the fight goes, the better fighter starts taking over, so I think it's gonna suit me. And uh, same question to Jakob, who is currently cutting weight, as you can see, is Slowly filling up this. Uh, this yum, yum. <laughs> how's the weight cut going, and how's this year been for you so far? Oh, this uh, this year's been great. Weight cut's good. We're on weight. We feel strong. So uh, push power will deliver. And I'm very excited. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for the five rounds. That's like all I ever wanted to do. I got a great gas thing. I know so does John. So it's gonna be fun. He ain't gonna gas. I ain't gonna gas. It's gonna be war. So this this makes me a very happy uh, push for you. And how does it feel that you'll be up against the hometown fighter? Do you think that changes anything? Oh, I fought in a lot of uh, kickboxing and, and in boxing I always was uh, the enemy, especially in Florida. And then once I fought in Montreal in the club and I'm used to it. Uh, so, and I also fought in the home crowd and that didn't even impact me either. I didn't feel more motivated than any, any else. The crowd is just the crowd, you know. It'd be nice to, I hope there's going to be a lot of Polish people. I want to make them proud. I want them to be happy. but. For me, it, you know, 
I'm just there, you know, and I just see the guy in front of me. Don't matter who who's around me, what they're yelling, you know, it's it's that that simple. Uh, and John, the hometown support, would it be nice to be fighting back in Dublin? Yeah, it's unreal to be fighting back in Dublin, but uh, you know, that's really motivation for during the camp. During the camp, it's when you're like doing your third session of the day, your third, you think about all the people you're going to be inspiring, but then as I get closer to it, it wouldn't matter if I was fighting Jakob outside in that car park or fighting him at the main event in the tree arena, I'm going to fight him just as hard anyway. So once I go into that cage, it's all the same thing. Any other questions? Go for it. Yeah. Um, Simeon, uh, Jakob, Jakob has uh, two first round knockouts, really quick knockouts uh, in his first two fights. Uh, that's a difference that with the other opponents that you've faced. So how do you sort of, uh, are you worried about that? Is, that? is that something new that he brings that others haven't? That yeah, def we've definitely acknowledged his um, power in the camp and um, taken that on board. But we've prepared for this and I'm confident in my abilities um, that he don't touch me at all, you know what I mean? So we got to stay smooth and stay clean, so that's it. Jakob, let me ask you a question. What, what are your thoughts on Simeon and where is he most dangerous for you in this fight? Uh, I respect uh, Simeon as a fighter and uh, I know he is a, he's a good fighter and he will try to get this fight at the later rounds and uh, on the distance. But uh, you've seen like 5% of me, so you don't uh, expect uh, me what my abilities are and you don't know my other skills. So. I can't wait to put on a show, and I'm um, really um, like thrilled for the Friday. And of course, we just had the, the global championships. Uh, Impa Kasang and I walking away with the million dollars and the, the championship. But I think you'll all agree, both of these light heavyweights on this stage are quite a bit bigger than the, than the, than the, the global light heavyweights at the moment. Do you feel, Sim, I'll, I'll throw that over to you. Do you feel? Um, like you integrate quite well into the global championships right now you, if you win this fight? Most definitely. I think um, a win against Jacob would definitely prove that as well. Like, look at him, he's a beast and he's got all, all his finishes come right of the first round. So I get a win, I get a real proper stoppage against him. I think it's, it's unquestionable what I can do in the global series. And, and, and Jakob, um, of course, everyone knows that you work fast. You've got a lot of first round finishes. Do you have to change this fight slightly because it's 25 minutes? Do you have to be prepared for, the, for, for going the distance if it, if it does go that far? Sure, uh, it's a 25 minutes uh, fight, but I uh, didn't rush in those finishes. They just came up uh, like uh, by, this, by themselves. Uh, I will be cautious, I will put pressure, I will be uh, ready for smart, smart violence inside of this cage in Friday, so uh, I can't wait for this show here. Yeah. Question? Uh, question for Dakota De Chaver, actually. You maybe heard this Katizi speak earlier about uh, the Rocky story that they're trying to write, but obviously you've got your own uh, storyline that you're, you're writing, and you're writing it step by step across the BFL. Uh, what are your predictions here on Friday night? What are my predictions? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't really care, to be honest, as long as like, I've got that belt. Um, I mean, another highlight reel, come on, you know, I've been providing them throughout the whole tournament, so definitely another highlight reel for sure. Um, and for, for Valentina, a um, couple of questions for you. First of all, what are your thoughts on your opponent, Dakota? She's had a, a strong year, some good performances, and what's it like to be sharing the card with your brother? Okay, allora, I think she is a good fighter, of course, all things, uh, but uh, I feel very confident uh, with myself, uh, with my feet, with my body, with uh, my skills, uh, and uh, so I'm ready for show you uh, all, everything uh, of these things, and uh, fight uh, on the same card uh, with my brother, it's uh, for me, uh, the best things uh, in the in this night will be a magic uh, night for this reason and uh, for everything. You have another question? Yeah. yeah. I have a question for, for Valentina. Uh, Valentina, a lot of people are underestimating you. They're saying that the crowd is the favorite here. What is your message to everybody who is underestimating you? What is your message to? What do you want to say to yeah, uh, I love uh, these things. Uh, I love uh, shock the world. I love surprise people. So this is.
perfect for me. Another question? There's a question for Dakota and Simon. As two fighters that were kind of billed as potentially the faces of PFL Europe at the start, now you've both made it to the final, do you feel any more added, added pressure? Yeah. Um, nah, do you know what? I feel like, for me personally, it's less less pressure now. Me and Dakota were the faces of this thing. We built this thing. And um, there was more pressure on the earlier rounds. If we didn't make it to the final, we would have been considered flops. We would have been looked at as garbage, you know what I mean? But we're here, we're in the final, and we're going we're gonna to show up for sure. I just can't wait to finish the story. We started as like a little duo. Our faces were all over Newcastle. We've been to Paris, smashed it there, and now we're here in Dublin. We've got one more job left to do. On Simeon's height. <laughs> and then we'll enjoy Christmas, go and have our Christmas dinner. Already thinking about Christmas dinner. I, I, I feel you, totally. I'm, I'm already on board, I'm already on board. Do you have, see, you got one more? Hang on, here we go. This one's for Nia Kelly. And Nia, you obviously have experience on the Challenger Series and on PFL Global Cards. What does it mean for you to be headlining in Dublin for the first time then? Uh, yeah, it's, it means a lot. Obviously, I've uh, I've had a bit of a rocky road in my career. Got off to a bad start. I went to and was in the was in the pits of despair at one point, but just kept the belief and kept working and. Um, I fought on uh, BAM a good few years ago in the three arena. It was my first, my second actually fight that I lost. Had a little bit of taste in my mouth. Got a bit of redemption then when I fought for Bellator and got the win there. And I got a taste of what it was like of that that kind of like superstar kind of feeling to fight in the big arena with your, all your friends and family coming and, and, and all that jazz. And I just vowed to myself that I'd be back again. I didn't think it'd be this soon. And I guess such a good opportunity. But, um, you know, I'm not getting the opportunity that I'm not getting. And, yeah, best believe I'm going to capitalise on it in, in, in the best way I can. So I'm um, really grateful for the opportunity I'm, I'm after to get in. So, and I'm just buzzing, buzzing to get in and, 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 and have some fun there on the night, 100%. Let me tell you, when we added this fight to the card, we, uh, a lot of tickets started moving straight away. I think a lot of people have been watching Nate from a distance while he's been fighting on the global uh, circuit. And they've been seeing his growth and his development. And uh, I mean, certainly Greg and I, we've been sitting cage side watching. He's been incredibly impressive. As a very tough opponent in front of him, in Dimitri Solomus, though, so I will ask Dimitri a question. What What are your thoughts on Nate Kelly as an opponent, and how do you feel to be uh, the enemy coming into uh, enemy territory? Uh, he's a great fighter, and I have a lot of respect for him. I think it might be strong physically. But uh, I will be faster than him. And I will be to catch I will catch him and I'm here for the victory and nothing else. It's very incredible to be there in Dublin for the PFL. Uh, I'm very happy about the, about the crowd and uh, it's a very beautiful crowd. And uh, I'm happy to be there, yeah. And, and Nathan, you got uh, you got a chance to face off yesterday. Um, height and reach advantage for your opponent. Have you got a plan how to deal with that? Uh, yeah, he's tall. I mean, neck was in bleeding bits there. No him yesterday. I was hurt. I was getting a kink in my neck. Um, but I've been just sparring tall, tall uh, lads in the gym. Um, I fought, I fought lads his height before, or thereabouts uh, his height before. I'm a little short ass. You know what I mean? So I'm well used to fighting taller people all the time. Um, so it's something I'm not um, unfamiliar with, and it's something that I'm, I'm well used to. So it's just gonna, it's gonna be another another day at the office on the night. You know what I mean? Height doesn't really. I just I, once I feel like it comes down to skills, I just don't think like the the reach and height, all that jazz will play an effect. I think I just have I'm a better fighter all around, more well rounded, better fight IQ, and yeah, like I'm just gonna I'm gonna get into what I do. He's tall. I think that's his that's his only kind of. Thing, the thing he brings to it, you know what I mean? Obviously, he's, he'd be tricky enough with his long limbs, but um, I think I'm just a smart fighter and I like, now have to fight someone with, with, with them attributes and, and, and them, uh, that, that reach on him, you know what I mean? I can definitely confirm that. I'm a long ass fighter. He's grand. He's getting to you, is he's he? He's good. Yeah. yeah. 
What, what's it like to, to train alongside someone that's on the same card as you? It's been great fun. Because it's, it's been like the four of us now. We, 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 I mean, we were training knowing that we're all going to be here. Like, um, so yeah, no, it's, but we're used to that at SVG. You know what I'm saying? So we're used to it. <laughs> and and just, meant, just talking about SVG, you got some good sparring in the end of your training camp. Do you want to talk us through that? What kind of confidence that gave you? Yeah, I sparred with McGregor there for the last bit of camp and, uh, you know, he calls me for a reason because, like, all my spars, I go to war and it was great to see my level and uh, bringing the confidence I got from that sparring into this fight, I'm ready for anyone. What are your thoughts on the belt? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice and it's just the start of the belt. Like, I'm going to get this one. I knew that coming into this. Like, I came in with not a lot of hype into the PFL and, I like, I didn't care about the hype. I draw a lot of par parallels with Brendan Lockton in as well. I just made myself undeniable. Now this belt's here and now you all have to talk about me. When I win this one into the World Series and we'll keep that talk going. Nice. Another question? Um, one for Franz. Franz, what is your prediction for how the fight ends on Friday night? I don't have a prediction. <laughs> Why does everybody keep asking me that? <laughs> I don't make predictions. Um, like, like I said, I'm fully aware of how, uh, 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 of how good my opponent is. Um, uh, and I'm fully ready for a 25 minute fight. You know what I mean? I think that's where it's gonna, that's what I'm ready for, that's what I've been preparing for. But obviously I feel like I have the skills to not make it go off that long. And that's the plan, but um, I'm ready for a 25 minute fight. But at the same time, uh, you know, we don't get paid overtime. So uh, I'm not looking to go 25 minutes, you know? You always say that you don't watch your opponents before a fight, but obviously you s used to spar with uh, Kershev. Do you feel that that's more of an advantage for him than it is for you? Not really. Like, um, just because it's not, like, just because I didn't study my opponents, it doesn't mean that, like, it's just something I didn't do just because I just didn't feel like I needed to. Do you know what I'm saying? Now that I, I, I know this guy a tiny bit better, I don't, I'm not really sure how it is going to affect me. I don't see how it could affect me negatively, though, if you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I'm just ready for this fight, man. Uh, I, I don't see how me knowing more of what he can do can affect me negatively. You get what I'm saying? Nice. Any more questions? Sure. I have a question for, for Jakob at the back. What's your prediction? Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question for Jakob at the back. What's your prediction for this, uh, for this massive contest against Simeon? What do you think of Simeon generally in his uh, career so far? Uh, like you said, I don't like predictions also, <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I expect that we will go in also in the later rounds, maybe, if he will uh, take this fight on a distance, but I will be comfortable in the stand-up or in the ground, so um, I, really, I really don't preoccupate this with, with this. Um, so uh, what I what I think about Simeon, he's a good fighter, he's a taller guy uh, with a rich advantage, but uh, I am uh, in my uh, lifetime form, so I, I don't, uh, I, don't uh, I, I don't have any of this um, uh, bad, bad, um, bad, bad uh, in my mind, so. Yeah, I can't wait for the fight. Sorry. Yep. Um, last question for Dakota. Dakota, we saw you do the Erling Haaland whenever you uh, won in the playoffs. What have you got planned for if you win this time around? I'm not telling you. <laughs> 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 wait and see. <laughs> I have got something planned though, yeah. But I need to concentrate on my fight and pull off my, uh, pull off my stoppage here yeah, because Last time in the second round, I was actually thinking about the fact that I needed to end the fight so that I could do the Harlan celebration. <laughs> so this time I need to make sure I'm concentrating and get the job done again, and then I'll be able to do my next one. Awesome. Any more questions before we wrap it up, get these guys faced off? No, all good. Okay, bear with us for a second. We're just gonna clear these tables and the, and the podium, and then we'll get all the fighters faced off. Thanks for your patience.
He's still standing. The atmosphere in this place is insane. The crowd, the energy. I've never experienced anything like it. In Dublin, December 8th, and make more European mixed martial arts history. All right, first two fighters to the stage. We're going to kick off with an amateur bout. Callum Seaton against Nate Kelly. Nate Kelly, Callum Seaton, please join me. Next up, Tom Breen, White and Silver. Next up, Brett Johns, David Toner, Kroll. What a fight, what a fight. Andreas Binder, Daniel Skatizzi. Next up, Lewis McGrill, Wesley Meyer. Next up, the light heavyweight championship. Simeon Powell and Jakub Nedo. Next up, Dakota Dichova 
I'm Valentina Scatizzi. John Mitchell, Jakub Kasuba, the light heavy lightweight championship. And the bantamweight title, Franz Malambu, Kershe Kakarov. Feature bout in the lightweight division, and Tuk Yazid Shushane. And the main event of the evening, Dimitri Solomus, Nathan Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. That wraps up the press conference. We appreciate you all. We will see you at the weigh-ins. Someone shout at me. We'll see you at the weigh-ins. Thank you very much. Dublin December 8th and make more European mixed martial arts history.